Okay guys, so we have a lead on some ducks and we're super excited. So the girls are gonna set up some work tables for John. He's gonna work on the duck house while I'm working on getting the leaves moved so that I can set up the fence for the duck house. So thank you little girls for all your work. And we... I'm gonna be inside making a doll. Well, after you set up the work table for dad. Mm -hmm. So what we need is probably a work table right here and then a work table right here. We found some Muscovy ducks on Craigslist and the reason we love them is they don't make any noise. They make this tiny little hissing sound sometimes, but um, no loud noises. Like a Khaki Campbell, the, the head of the flock, she will quack and quack and quack and quack. If she wants something from you, she, you she'll let you know. Whereas with Muscovies, they're very quiet and they lay a lot of eggs and they're very broody in a way that a Banty hen is broody. So we love duck eggs. We prefer them to chicken eggs because we just feel like ducks are so maintenance free. We, we adore them. So all we really need is to make sure that the enclosure doesn't have any holes in it and that there's actually a fence everywhere and we need to give them a safe place to sleep at night away from predators. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, I don't want to encourage vines and weeds to come up through my comp compost pile. The leaves are not real um, heavy. They're not heavy. They're gonna break down very quickly and there's not gonna be a whole lot of them left and it will not keep out weeds very well. So what I kinda wanna do, so, I don't, I don't wanna give them a chance. So I'm gonna put down some cardboard and move my whole compost pile again. One of the things I'm doing is just testing out materials. I'm not used to these materials. I'm not used to having this many leaves and I don't know what the vines are gonna do. So I'm pulling vines out of the compost rather than composting them. If I do compost, compost them, I'll lay down cardboard and I'll just put the vines together. Um, so we have something nasty back home. It's called bindweed and um, the vines kind of remind me of the bindweed as far as like what they'll grow in and what they like. So. That's what I'm working on. Now I get to transfer all those leaves to this. <laughs>
Okay, so the first thing I do when I'm building a new animal enclosure is I use free. I use free and ugly and secure. Usually I'm used to having a lot of baling twine around from hay bales, but I had to go take this out of Paige's bag because it's the only string I have. So I'm gonna use string to tie this up. I'm gonna see if it's secure enough for the ducks. If it is, if it is, I will reinforce it. If it is, I'll fix it. I'll make it cute eventually. But the first one, you're gonna be spending enough money on the animals themselves and on feed and on bedding that you need to go as inexpensive as you can when you're getting their shelter put together as long as it's warm and cozy and safe. Because usually you'll find something that doesn't work. Um, you might as well start with something that doesn't work and have it be free rather than spend a couple hundred dollars and find out, oh, this didn't work. I wish X, Y, and Z had been different. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through every square inch of this property at the bottom of every fence and double check that there's nowhere for them to sneak through. And it doesn't have to be more complicated than that, but it does need to be thorough. The reason why I think it's important for me to share this is that you're not always going to be in an ideal situation where you have plenty of money and lots of space. Sometimes you just have to make do with what you have and it really does make a huge difference in your family's food budget. So I do think it's worth showing these simple solutions. Hey guys, so this, this here, that's their natural dirt here. There's no rocks in it and it's dark and like it came up with a shovel. I've never experienced dirt like that before. Okay. It doesn't smell like dirt. It smells a little bit like I'm sweet chocolate. Beautiful. Right? Okay, so I need something to attach the plywood to since we're putting it on the outside. So I'm just putting in one two by four on each corner that will square up to the outside corner. A big thank you to Josh from Essential Mountain Homestead, Darwin from the Honeydew Carpenter, and anybody else who taught me how to use a skill saw this summer. I really appreciate it. You, I probably shouldn't give you credit considering what it looks like when I do it, but I still really appreciate it. So 
So, I've been sitting here staring at this for 10 minutes now, trying to decide what to do. With ducks, or chickens or anything else, it's nice to be able to access the eggs without having to climb into their coop. And what I was anticipating was just tipping the coop back and just being able to reach in and get the eggs. And to be able to tip it back and be able to clean it very easily. Um, but what I'm kind of wondering is if I have little kids that need to be able to get in and out of it, do I instead want to have something that comes like this and drops down? Do you know what I mean? Uh, the only thing is, if I do that, then I don't have a door. So, I was planning on having this be the door that could open and close and keep the ducks really nice and secure. With something like this, it doesn't keep it dark enough. Ducks and chickens both, they're gonna lay their eggs in a dark, quiet place. They want seclusion um, because if they were gonna hatch those eggs, they would a dark, quiet place would be the safest place. We'll have to see. Okay, so what I've come to is that I'm going to put these up and then I'm gonna cut another piece for here. And then I'm gonna have a solid door through here and that way we can reach in pretty much anywhere in here and get those eggs. So if you want to see really perfect carpentry in a beautiful homestead where everything squares up and it is just fantastic, go see Lumna Acres. They do a fantastic job. And I will say that I watch their channel and that's fantastic what they're doing but someday I might be that good I might be but right now I'm not that doesn't mean I shouldn't build it um, I learned a long time ago that you're really your days are numbered and if you're waiting for perfect and you're waiting for that perfect day when everything lines up and you have energy and and you have unlimited funds that day will never come you need to be doing what you feel is important and living the way you want to live today as imperfect as it is because it'll teach you for tomorrow and it will feed your soul to do it today go find a mentor who can teach you whether it be a YouTube mentor or an, an in-person mentor but do today the thing that is important to you that you've been dreaming about Duck cages are so necessary. I love these stuck in stakes. They work so well in mulch and let you move things. That's what it looks like. <laughs> it does. You guys have already seen this, right? The cages that I make to protect the shallow rooted um, perennials keeps the ducks from getting in and um, rooting out their roots. And those are blackberries, which I think is pretty exciting. I don't know if we'll ever get fruit off of them, but I think they're beautiful. My favorite thing to do on the homestead is to watch my animals be happy. I fill up the swimming pool and just let the animals play in it and it's just super fun. 
because they're just so contented. She would have gone from having nine babies to having zero, and it could have it could have made her real sick. So seven in here, two in here. We'll probably take these guys out too here pretty quick. Everything's looking pretty good. But not tidy. Never tidy. My personal belief is that I just don't have enough ducks out here. See all that lovely manure water? That's what this tree needs. There's our Drake who thinks that he hates the khaki Campbells. He does. He hates them. That little head bob thing that the girls are doing, that means breed me, I'm fertile. That's what that means, and it just pisses him off. They'll come approach him to be bred, and he just gets really frustrated with them. He will breed, but he'll only breed with his wife. I need to take all of those blooms off that rhubarb, but I don't really want to. We don't eat the rhubarb much. If you let it bolt like this where it goes to seed, then the stems get hollow and they're not good to eat. But look how much those bees are enjoying those flowers, so why would I want to do that? Probably just what I need to do. I just need more ducks in the backyard. I am duck deficit. This is the first year that the crab apples have actually had seedlings. Every other year I've just been really surprised because usually crab apples are something of a menace because when they when their fruit fruit lands under the tree, it'll go turn into a seedling. And we've never had that happen before. This year, this year it did happen. And that is super exciting to me because it means that our, our land is finally fertile enough to accept life. There's another one. <gasps> this is our first year that we've had gooseberries. You see that? Gooseberry. Hooray! I think this one's a Hinamaki. <gasps> it has gooseberries on it too. See? And again, it's not watered. Just the grapes. Do you want to go get the little saw and cut down this apple tree? Yeah. In fact, I have a saw on my own. Um, Here's mother. some roses. Um, that might be tricky. What are you doing, honey? You're not going through there. I know, and I don't want it to be any bigger for chickens to get through. Please don't go through that way. Again, all the white flowers are hoary crests, which are not good for animals to eat, but the bees like them. Let's see. Um, this one is another pear. There's some fruit. Our mama duck is still sitting on a nest. I know she's not fertile. It just makes me feel so bossy to try and take her down. Hmm? Good. So it's interesting to see what will come up on, on its own and what won't. I am running a risk by having this water here. I could very well have chicks try to get in, but over by their food, I have their little waterer that's still short. And as long as I have that there, they should go there first. Hi guys, I've watched some really fun cooking shows lately that were so beautiful and the presentation was gorgeous. And I think you guys like me just as I am, even with the dirty stove. So I'm working on the presentation, but in the meantime, I really want to get this information to you. When you have farm fresh eggs, they have a tendency to stick badly when you hard boil them. So it's really hard to peel them because the membrane won't separate there. It hasn't had long enough to age for that membrane to pull away from the egg itself. The older the egg is, the easier it is to peel. So if you have eggs that were laid today, it's very hard to peel them. So this is what I do. You see my little steamer basket in the bottom? The little steamer basket um, makes it so that none of the eggs are immersed. They don't get jostled at all when they're cooked. And I actually steam the eggs, I think about five minutes. Kaya, can you stop scraping that for a minute, please? Thank you. No, just stop for a minute, please. Kaya, you may obey me the first time. Just stop for a minute. I'm almost done. So, especially the quail eggs, this is important because they have very thin shells but very tough. Uh, we did a bunch of ducks and had Matt's meats butcher them. 
This one we had smoked. Can you see it? So we just got back from the butchers. This is our chest freezer. And this is newly uh, full. It, so it was a quarter full before. Now I had to take one whole box and put it in a different freezer because I didn't have enough room. So we got one full box of bacon, which is amazing to me because that was not a really big pig. Um, we came away with five boxes of meat because we had, um, we requested the hearts the livers and the tongues to be done up to and they make really good roasts and then we had seven ducks this one we had half of them smoked I don't even know if I can find it here it is half of them we had smoked so the, these ducks are smoked and then these ducks were not smoked you can see the size differences these ones have more moisture in them still since they weren't uh, smoked wanted to show you all my random eggs out there. Over there next to the fence, right there. Right here next to the pump, right here. Where we haven't had freezing weather, rather than them just exploding and me never finding them, I'm seeing them. So, <laughs> darn ducks. I head down inside the pillow and then I start pulling in the opposite direction. I do all around the neck and then I just work kind of in a circle all the way around up the duck. If you don't want to save the feathers, you don't have to do it this way. Um, but I want to save the feathers. I have a gift that I'm making for someone for Christmas. Is the pillow. Once you have all your feathers in here, and it's really very nice. Um, once you have all the feathers in, you want to sew it up so they can't escape, and then you would put a pillowcase on the outside. Of it. These are the ducks and geese. As you can see, they're out eating the new growth of weeds on the, on the driveway. We raise blue Swedish ducks. <clears throat> and what they're really good at is eating slugs in mulch. They'll, instead of chickens, where chickens will scratch up your mulch, chickens will just stick their little head in and move it around just a tiny bit and find the slugs where they are without disturbing the mulch. So rather than having to replace mulch everywhere that they've been, it just stays there. But the geese, they love to eat grass, so they're especially good for weeding in like a strawberry patch. Um, these ones are African Toulouse mix. Our last batch were white Chinese, and the white Chinese I think were a little more friendly. But we had them, we raised them in the house because it was still too cold from outside, so that probably has something to do with it. Our mama duck, all but one of these babies is adopted. This little mama duck will adopt just about anything that has a quack or any kind of waterfowl squeak. She's amazing. And she sat her own eggs. But we had a fox get in, so we ended up replacing, adding seven more ducks. And we had to replace our geese as well because of a fox. I just needed to do a better job keeping them put up.